Good morning, folks. <laughs> that was so fake. Um, I'm saying good morning because I'm recording this right now while it's morning time. But if it's not morning for you, just disregard that. Um, the song that I was listening to in the beginning of this, just a few seconds ago, Mercy by Amanda Cook. Y'all can't see that, but I will definitely like leave the name and who sings it, the artist of uh, the song down below that song is amazing this song has been on repeat since i first heard it friday well no it's been on repeat since yesterday but it's been on repeat in my head since friday um and i finally just went and found the song so yeah this song is amazing um and oddly enough the way god works it ties into what i'm talking about today um so yeah i feel like i'm wearing clothes y'all I am, I promise. Um, but yeah, so definitely go listen to that song because it's bomb. Amanda, God used her. God used her for real, for real. Um, so today, excuse how raspy my voice is. Like I said, it's morning time. So yeah, morning voice is still in full effect. Um, but yeah, so I know in the last video that I posted, I said I was going to... I said I was gonna do a testimony video and it's gonna be like a three part thing and yada 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 but I'm kind of at a point where I'm tired of talking about my testimony not that I'm not grateful for what God did for me super grateful uber grateful forever indebted but I feel like there's more things that I have to say than just my testimony yes that's where I came from thankful that God delivered me like like I said before, like I'm forever indebted, but there are other things that I can talk about. And I've already talked about my testimony twice. I talked about my testimony on another channel. I'll link the video if you want to hear about it. But um, yeah, I just other things. Um, and also, dad, I listen, I call God dad, so just just bear with me um he gave me something else to talk about something that like he's been bothering me he's like go talk about it go talk about it go talk about it so yeah i'm gonna talk about this and it's really awkward so forgive me i'm an introvert and um i don't like expressing myself so forgive me if i'm super awkward while i'm saying this like i'm introverted and socially awkward and then i'm about to be talking about this stuff just forgive me if I'm awkward okay um so yeah basically and you know it's serious because I actually wrote in an actual notebook this time usually I have my phone I have my little notes but no like I got a whole page and actually if you flip it over I got a whole page and a half so yeah it's it's real today like he really wanted me to talk about this I was like in the secret place and I was like well what should I say and he was like get a notebook start writing the sentences I was like okay cool so yeah um basically this is just I want to start out by saying this I am not judging anybody and that's why I said the song goes with what kind of correlates with what I'm talking about I'm not judging anybody if you listen what you do is between you and God this is just my perspective um just because i know a lot of people hear people say oh and i'm about to rip on the topic even though you can see it in the title um i don't have sex before marriage just because jesus said you know don't have sex before marriage um i'm here to tell you before i got saved i that wasn't enough for me like <laughs> I'm sorry, but just because it says it in the Bible, don't have sex before marriage, I was like, is there more? Like, you gotta give me more. That's not enough. I need you to give me more reasons. So after exploring this for like, not exploring this, but like it comes up, um, God has given me revelation of it. I've learned through other people that he's given revelation of it and so yeah I just want to say like everything in this is not mine per se like God gave other people revelation of it God gave me some revelation of it and I'm just going to share what I've learned and acquired 
Um, so yeah, like I said, just the fact that it's in the Bible that says don't have sex before marriage was not enough for me. Like I needed more information. So basically, I went and found some more information in this first part that I'm about to give y'all. Um, it's actually something I learned at church because yeah um church is the place that you should really be learning about this but sometimes you gotta learn from learn about it from other places so yeah um my first thing is god created sex if you didn't know he created all of us he created everything he created the world he created sex um like i said sorry y'all i'm awkward so yeah but the thing is like why so like i did not learn this until about a month ago why god created sex and it's actually kind of like cool so basically god created sex to signify the oneness that we have with him so basically how we're one with god like we are the body of christ like you're one with god it's basically supposed to be the same thing with your spouse you're, you're one with your spouse so to show how you're, I talk with my hands, to show how you're one with God and you're one with your spouse, that's like sex is the way to make, your, make you become one pretty much. So it signifies the oneness with Christ. There we go. Um, and I wrote that. So just as we are one with Christ, we should be one with the people who we are sleeping with. Um, and this is why we have soul ties with people that you sleep with because in God's eyes you are one with that person. Like even if you're not married, like whoever you sleep with, you become one. And um yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that yet. We just gonna I'm just gonna jump in. So yeah, um my reasons for not participating in sex before marriage is because <laughs> If it has anything to do with creating a child, I don't want it, I don't need it, okay? Like, hold on. No, I'm, I'm joking. But on the serious tip, though, because I'm really not joking. Um, not to, like, bash anybody that's got kids or nothing like that. I just know me, per se, myself, Shayla Brown, me, not ready. Like, I'm not ready, and I'm not going to put myself in a position to bring a child into the world knowing that I'm not ready. Like, for me, I always say that you are supposed to be able to well in my eyes this is my opinion my she was a, my opinion that you are supposed to be able to give your child a life better than you had and for me my life um my parents have set the bar like they like up here so i need to be up here not that i want to be better than my parents but like i said they set the bar they give me a pretty dang on good life so if i can't give a child or my child better than what i've had then i don't want to bring a child into the world yet that's just my my opinion my my opinion um so yeah i just if a, if a child can come out of it count me out I'm not here for it um so yeah um that's that's my first reason that's always gonna be like that's until i have kids that's always gonna be like or until i get married whatever i don't want them right now okay <laughs> um and then another reason my second reason is because i'm crazy <laughs> so what i mean by that is I I'm not a person who likes to show my emotions, but I'm very in touch with my emotions. Um even though I try not to be. I just I'm I'm weird. Okay. Um 
I am very in touch with my emotions and I am a type of person who uh, do I want to say that on camera too, too late I'm already here I am a type of person and I can say this now that I'm safe that I'm way better way 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 better I get attached to things and people quickly um not that I'm attached to Jesus though, like I promise you, like it's gotten so much better. I'm like, God, thank you. But like I just I'm that person. Like I can say that, I can own that, I can admit that. Um, so yeah. Basically it was something that God gave me a revelation of like you get attached like without sex. What do you think it's gonna be like once you do? have sex with somebody and so I was like mm, you are right you are so right so that was that was one of the reasons and I know that a lot of people will say like oh like you can have sex with somebody and not have any attachments and yada 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 you're just good at suppressing your feelings sis like I don't that I'm sorry that came off really I don't know but yeah honestly you're probably just good at suppressing your feelings and that's not a good thing and sometimes it's not something that's conscious like you're conscious that you're suppressing those feelings like sometimes it's just something that your body has is naturally or your mind is naturally immune to and so whenever there's a connection there it's like suppressed to the back of your mind mm, i'm not that type of person it it just don't work for me like it literally will sit right here like on the top of my mind thinking about it like I just know me okay um so and that's that's what a lot of females but like I said some t some of us are really good at suppressing stuff so um yeah they won't show it most of the time but me I know myself and I'm not gonna put myself out there to be in that type of situation um like my sister Keandra said like you think you're crazy now like she was like well the example she gave you think you're crazy now but you sleep with that person and then all of a sudden y'all in public together and i'm speaking from a woman's perspective um but it can be vice versa you all of a sudden y'all in public and he turns his head and looks like this and there's a girl next to him and you like why are you looking at a girl while i'm standing right here like it it intensifies what's already there that's what sex does and me i just don't want it i don't need it i'm a calm laid back nonchalant person i like being this way so i'm not trying to do nothing that will cause me to get out of this little mode that i'm in like i like being this way sorry i like being this way so i'm not i'm not messing with it no um <laughs> Two, sex is the only sin that deals with your soul. And I actually got this from, heard this from my brother Xavier. And I'm about to read the Bible verse because, um, as he would say, I don't want to go to hell. Um, it is 1 Corinthians, and I should have had this pulled up. My bad, my bad, my bad. It is 1 Corinthians 6.18. And I'm going to read the ERV version, the easy read version, so it's like plain and clear and out there. It says, so run away from sexual sin. It involves the body in a way that no other sin does. So if you commit sexual sin, you are sinning against your own body. So that is deep to me because for me being a really spiritual person, for me being a saved person, like I want my soul pure, you know, like I want my soul to be honorable in God's sight, you know? Like I want when God looks at me to be like, yo, like she's legit, you know? Like I still have flaws, I still have things in me that aren't um, good, but like I want God to look at me and be like, she's trying to do better and she's trying to get better, you know? Like I'm not constantly, I don't wanna constantly put something in my soul that I feel like could taint it. Like I said, this is my opinion. This is my opinion. This is my opinion. This is my opinion. Um, and this is just what works for me. This is the revelation God gave 
me I'm putting it out there but just in case like it helps or works for somebody else I don't know I'm just putting it out there my reasons because like I said like many of you just because Jesus said it and the Bible said it, it wasn't enough of a reason for me. So these are my reasons. I'm going to keep reiterating that because I don't want nobody to be like, oh, she's judging and yada, yada, yada. No. Um, so yeah, it's the only sin that deals with your soul. And for me, I'm accountable for what I know. So I know this to be true. So at the end of the day, if I was to die right now and I go stand before God and he's like, okay, so you knew this. So why did you go commit sexual sin? Like, what can I say? There's literally nothing I can say at that moment. So I rather just keep myself clear, you know, like, yes, God is a forgiving God. But once you know something, you are held accountable, especially like, yes, once you know something, you're held accountable. So I'm just not going to put myself in a position for God to be like, you knew this. Like, I know there's certain things that that will happen, but if I can avoid some of them I will or I'm gonna try um so yeah and then my third reason and this is probably like one of my most important reasons um all of them are important all of them but this is like one of the biggest ones for me um so my wedding day my wedding day basically I want to on my wedding day I just want to give off the I want to know, I'm trying to figure out how I want to say this. I'm, I want him to know that not only that I value myself enough, but I valued him enough. Because at the end of the day, like, you're not just valuing yourself when you abstain from sex. You're valuing him because of, and you know, let me just get into it. You're valuing yourself and you're val val valuing him and vice versa for guys to girls. Um... Where am I? Where am I at? Okay, so on my wedding day, I want to give my husband a gift that nobody else has ever had, that he's never had. Like, I, that's just my personal opinion. Like, I don't want, like, you could give material gifts all you want to, but like, on your wedding day, you're supposed to give that person, like, it's supposed to be like, this is our journey walking together. Like, I'm officially giving you all of me. Like, because I'm not giving you all of me while we're just in a relationship. Sorry, not doing it. Mm, not here for it. That's just not me. Like, you don't get all of me because you're not my husband. Like, honestly, you can leave at any time. But for me being a Christian, me being a saved person, once we enter into marriage, like, that's it. Like, and I'm, 10 times out of 10, I'm marrying somebody that's equally yoked in that decision. Like, we're stuck together, bruh. Like, you're not going anywhere. So get used to it. So in a relationship, like, we can break up and we can leave each other at any time. But once we're in marriage, like, we're stuck. So you're not going anywhere. And I know this for sure because we both have strong convictions when it comes to God. So not that I'm saying I know my husband or whatever. I don't listen God is too good to send me somebody who is not equally yoked. He says in his word, you need to be equally yoked with the person that you're married to. So this is just stuff that God is too good for me to not, for him to send somebody who I don't share the same beliefs. And, you know, we got to have that belief in common. So, yeah, like I said, this is, this is for me as a Christian. Um, yeah, I want to give him a gift that he or no one else has ever had. And another thing is, I don't wanna be out in public and see my ex or somebody that I used to talk to and they'd be like, they can basically be like, oh, you know I had her before, right? You know I had your girl before, right? Like, I'm just, I'm not here for it, okay? Like, just not for me. I don't know, maybe an ego thing, maybe a pride thing, but I want my man to have confidence in the fact that you are legitimately the only one. Like, that's it. So, I know it's popular today for, like, you to have many people. And I just, I'm not. It don't work for me. I don't have time for other people to be telling my man, oh, I had her before. Like, 
I don't have time to deal with that. Sorry, that's just not me. <laughs> um, where else am I? I don't know where I'm at. Oh. Oh yeah, and like I said, that's when your lives is when truly starts together. So that's when you're like really giving that person all of you. And like, I just feel like that should really be for the wedding day. And then sex is supposed to consummate the marriage. So it's supposed to seal the deal. Like this is, this is it. Like this is me and you. This is us together this is what we work for throughout our whole relationship and engagement this is the moment that we become one this is the moment that we signify to god like hey we're one because we're we're not one before so i mean unless you sleep with that person then you're one in god's eyes that's between you and god um so yeah that is reason three reason four is and this one I got from my brother Xavier too. Um, I don't want to create a habit of sleeping with somebody who isn't my husband. And it goes a little bit deeper than that. So basically, this shirt is about to aggravate me if y'all can't tell. But um, so basically, I can't speak for the emotional part of like why people cheat. But I can kind of speak to the sexual like the physical part of why people cheat um if somebody has been with multiple people before you even anybody before you um it's easier for that person to when they get bored with you for their mind to wander back to Shaniqua I don't know who Shaniqua is I just I'm speaking from a female's perspective but like I said all of what I'm saying can be vice versa it can be from male to female but it's easier for their mind to slip slip back to somebody that they had before when they get bored with you and I know what you're saying like oh you love that person you don't get bored reality is you will get bored that's why people are always talking about oh how do you spice it how do you keep it spicy in the bedroom because you get bored um not that I'm saying that somebody who didn't sleep with anybody before won't think about other people but it's less likely for them to start thinking about something that they've never had before if that makes sense um and where did i write it yes 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 so basically when you are there's this when you're bonding with somebody period um sex is just like an intense version of it i guess or like an intense in a more intensive way um your body releases, i mean your brain your brain releases a chemical called dopamine and like that is like it's almost like how do i explain it i don't know look it up but like basically it's like a bonding chemical that is released so like when you're with that person the dopamine is released so like it's almost like your brain is trained to like keep wanting to go back to that person or that thing and so like when you're with somebody and that dopamine is released and you get this feeling it's almost like your body gets addicted to that feeling because dopamine is like a bonding chemical um so every time you sleep with somebody that dopamine is released and you can get different feelings from different people and you just don't want to confuse i don't know if i explained that right i probably didn't like i said go look it up did i say that i don't know if i said it go look it up because i i'm not good at explaining it i could say it in my mind and make it make sense but saying it out loud i'm just not good i can't explain it i'm not good at explaining stuff but yeah so your mind can go back can easily go back to that person that thing and when that chemical is released um and feel and think about that person that you were with before that's now not your wife or not her husband so you don't want to get into the habit of practicing sexual intercourse with somebody that's not your husband or wife because it honestly is just going to make it easier for you to cheat on that person there we go um i tied my point together because i didn't think i was gonna land this plane correctly but i did um so yeah, 
Wait, let me turn in the page. We get into my turn in the page. Um, another. Oh yes, 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 yes. And I know the big thing that everybody says. Why would you buy a car without test driving it? Can I tell you something about God? Let me offer you a little bit of information. God created you. God knows you more than you know you. God knows your needs more than you know your needs. So it's like what makes us, and I'm going to say me too, think that if God doesn't know what we need, like if God knows what we need, why wouldn't he give us what we need? So like basically what I'm saying is God is way too good to not send you or give you somebody that's going to satisfy you in every way that you need to be satisfied. If we can be like 110% for real. God will never sell you short. Like he will never fail you. He will never give up on the job. Like he's always on the job. So we've created this thing where we feel like God hears us and God gives us the best and everything else. But some areas he like skips and he goes around. And it's funny because we just talked about talked about this in church yesterday. Um, God doesn't skip any areas. He doesn't go around any areas. So just like he can give you the best in your career and life and whatever, like he can give you the best and the person and a person and a person so that they have what it takes to satisfy you sexually. If we're just to be like one hundred and ten percent real, and let me read what I put here. And I pretty much just said, yeah, he's going to give you what you need. Like, he doesn't stop at just one area or one thing. Like, he'll give you exactly what you need. So, you don't have to test drive the car. Like, you don't have to. Like, if it's meant for you, it's for you. And it's going to satisfy you the way that it needs to satisfy you. Um, and something else just came to mind and then it left because I kept talking. Uh, oh, that's it. Um, just like we do everything else unto God and God is pleased and we get this good feeling when God, when we do stuff unto God and he's pleased, it's the same thing with sex. Um, if you're, if you're doing it unto the glory of God, and I know it sounds crazy because we just don't think about sex like this. If you're doing it unto the glory of God, like God will lead you and guide you on how to satisfy that person or how you should satisfy that person or how that person should satisfy you. I think I just said that twice. But anyway, um, God will lead you. Like, I think we we just think that God excludes this thing. But just like he leads you in everything else, he'll lead you like you this is the thing, we're not alone. God said he never leaves us nor forsakes us. So he won't leave us in anything. Like he's going to lead us and guide us in any and everything. So yeah. And then the last reason is I'm saved, y'all. Like I, like I said, I'm held accountable for what I know. And I know too much to practice something that I know this much about. Because like I said, I'm not trying to stand before God and God be like, you knew the truth and you still chose not to abide by it. I honestly don't have a choice at this point. Well, I do because God gives free will. But like, if I want what God has for me, the way God has it for me, I've got to obey these laws. Like, like I said before in a previous video, like when you're in a relationship with somebody, your goal is to please them. Like... You want to please them. You want to make sure they're happy with you and they're okay with you and they're confident in you. It's the same thing with me and God. Like, I know everybody's, people watching this is probably like, she got way too much faith. You're right, I do. I have so much faith in God, but it's not because I just believe in God. It's because of what God has showed me. Like, yesterday in church when my pastor got up to preach, he was literally in tears and he was like, it's not like it's honestly because I'm so grateful he's like I'm loved like when you experience this amount of love it's like I want to do whatever it takes to please you so that's how it is with me um and like I said I don't know why I keep saying like I said because I don't know if I said this before um 
I was a person who struggled with depression a lot. There was points time points in time where I didn't want to live, where I felt like I had no purpose for living. Um, so now that I found this one thing, I found everything I needed in one thing. Like, I'm not going to mess that up. If he says don't do something, I'm not going to do it. Like, when I say this is my saving grace, I literally mean this is my saving grace. This is the reason I still want to wake up in the morning. This is the reason why I feel my life has purpose. So I'm not going to do it, especially when it deals with my soul. It's the only sin that deals with my soul. I'm not doing it. That's just not me. So yeah, I sit here today <laughs> as a proud, ew, why? Shayla, what? So yeah, like I was saying, um, sorry, camera cut off. I sit here today as a proud 19, almost 20 year old virgin. And I'm happy with it. Honestly, I'm so proud of myself for the amount of self-control I've been able to exhibit. Um, hi, mom. There were moments where I definitely could have slipped up, but I just say God didn't allow it um and honestly I won't say it's because of my own self-control I won't even say that I won't go that far but I'm just honestly proud of the fact that God was keeping me and still is keeping me um I can say God has been pursuing me since as far back as I can remember I remember having conviction like young like I was that person that like if somebody did if everybody else did something wrong and I did something wrong I was the one to get caught so yeah God has been pursuing me and after me for a long time and just like conviction was always strong conviction was always there yes I tried to suppress it sometimes I know it's, it's not healthy but God was always looking out for me and yeah um that was actually easier than I thought it was going to be to say because I'm not an open person. So the fact that that was so easy for me to just come out and say, but I am proud. Like, I'm very proud. I'm not better than anybody. Like, I'm just proud of myself, you know, because some people are like, oh, my virgin, I'm better than you. <laughs> no, that's not me at all. Um, I'm just good with me, you know, like, I'm just good with me. I'm just good with God. Like, I'm satisfied in my life and how things are going like i'm just i'm good you know i'm gucci so yeah um with that being said i hope y'all enjoyed this video i hope you got something from it i pray to god you do not feel judged um that's not my intention at all i really just wanted to share this from my perspective just to see like just to put it out there if anybody else you know felt this way or if anybody else wanted some more reasons because like I said it wasn't because God said it wasn't enough for me as bad as that sounds but yeah I'm gonna stop talking now because I gotta go to work <laughs> um so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe I don't know why I started doing this um and yeah have a blessed rest of the week what are you doing? Why are you so awkward?